Hello everybody and welcome back. So now I talk about heat and its effects on the environment, specifically the oceans. When we do climate, we will do all this stuff in even more detail, more examples, more case studies, more problems, locations, but it's good that we talk this over for now. Before we get to the human part, awesome. Uh, this is a picture of coral bleaching. Essentially, whenever corals are stressed, really stressed, they purge all the organisms that live inside of them, and um, it's not the same as them completely dying, but it can lead to death, right? It's a sign that they have been stressed beyond what is beneficial for the organism in any way, right? See more coral bleaching here. Um, so, we talked about Earth trapping heat, right, with its atmosphere as a result of the greenhouse effect and how big of a difference that makes and how important it is and how uh, if you add more greenhouse gases over time, which is what we were doing, we get more heat as a result right now. Most of the heat is actually going to get absorbed into the ocean and not into the atmosphere. Something like a 10 to 1 ratio just goes into the ocean, right? Uh, the oceans can store a lot of heat. This is also part of the reason why emissions could drop all the way to zero, right? We could stop putting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere tomorrow and temperatures would still keep going up, right? Um, there are a lot of negative effects of putting all this heat into the ocean, right? We'll talk about ocean acidification. We've talked about coral bleaching. We'll talk about sea level rise, right? Intensified storms and then this uh, sort of day-night increase. All right, human beings are pumping a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, much more than those there before. Uh, something like 250 parts per million in the atmosphere prior to industrialization, something like 430 now. So a huge increase, almost double. As a result of this, right, we're pumping lots of carbon dioxide gas into the atmosphere. More and more of that carbon dioxide gas is going to dissolve into the ocean. So the same way that with dissolved oxygen, right? Oxygen in the air dissolves into the water in the ocean just a little bit, and how that's really important, even though there's only a small amount of it, for fish who suck that oxygen out with their gills. So this is a similar process, right? Except we don't want this to happen. So the way it works, the atmosphere has carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide dissolves into the water and forms this thing called carbonic acid, which I guess as a fun fact is also found in Coke, but not Pepsi, which uses citric acid. Lowers the pH of the water, makes it more acidic. Uh, as a result, right, we get an ocean that is more and more acidic over time, and the organisms in the ocean, many of which had shells or teeth or bones or other hard parts, uh, can't form those things as well, especially shells, and especially in the case of shellfish, right? So ocean gets more acidic over time. These animals can't make the shells because the shells literally get eaten away by the acid. So you have big negative impacts of this on fishing, on shellfish industries, and this is one of those things that affects the entire planet and affects a system, the ocean system, which is really interconnected, right? Because all the parts of the ocean can sort of talk to each other, right? So even beyond the directly measurable impacts, it's not good. It stresses out everything, and that's not good. Sea level rise, which you may have heard of, right? So something on the order of yeah, half centimeter a year, but it really varies, right? Certain places are going to be less, certain places are going to be more. There are a number of reasons for this, but the biggest one is actually going to be glacial rebound. So when we had our ice age, there were these big ice sheets on all the continents pressing down. Those are gone, right? They've receded, and parts of the continent are bouncing back up, but parts of the continent were actually bulged up by the ice sheet. So now that you remove the ice sheet, they're coming back down. It's happening specifically on the East Coast, happening in New Jersey. Sea level rise there, broadly speaking, is more than 0.5 centimeters per year. It is a lot more. This is just our global average, way more in some places than others. There's two factors that contribute to this, right? So the first one is going to be melting ice. So we have higher temperatures as a result of our amplified greenhouse effect, which comes from our increased CO2, right? It melts out ice. You melt ice into the ocean that was on land. Now you have more water in the ocean that causes it to rise. Um, this yeah, is mostly going to be continental ice sheets. So Antarctica and Greenland, when we talk about ice sheets, as in big blocks of ice on continents, not in the water. Uh, the other part of it is thermal expansion of the seawater. So as it gets hotter, you've got the same amount of water, but it's more spread out, essentially, than before, right? So warmer temperatures, right, mean that the particles are moving around more, and they tend to spread out as a result. And the ocean literally expands in terms of volume as a result of this. Um, there are some issues, right? So melting ice we didn't talk about before with albedo, right? 
But this is one of those things that can run away and get out of control as far as climate is concerned, right? So we've got ice, right, at the poles, right, especially at the South Pole, and, well, especially at Greenland, which isn't exactly at the pole, okay. This ice reflects a lot of sunlight back into space, right, which is good, keeps Earth cool. Um, but as you melt that ice, right, the land underneath actually absorbs a lot of the sunlight that the ice would have reflected, right? So temperatures go up, right, which causes more ice to melt, which means that we've got more land exposed, which means that more heat is absorbed, which means more ice melts. Okay, this is an example of this thing called a positive feedback loop, which will become very important when we talk about climate change and other complicated things, but we get to look at it now as well. Awesome. Sea level especially going to be an issue in certain places, coastal regions, harms tourism, not good, destroys real estate, destroys coastal properties. Very, very big deal in the longer term. Not something that is expected to have sudden jumps. Storms are going to be another part of it, which is closely related to these other effects we've talked about in the ocean, right? So we have increased temperature. It's going to lead to more evaporation, right? We've got more moisture that's coming up out of the water, and the waters themselves are warmer to where whenever storms, right, weaker regular storms pass over the warmer water, sucks more heat and energy and moisture out. This causes storms, especially in the North Atlantic, uh, aka the East Coast, to get much stronger. This is going to be made worse in terms of its effects on human beings by the rise in sea level. So if you've got not only sea level going up and up and up and up up each year, but also more intense storms that push those things to the extreme, then you get worse results with human beings as a result. Uh, the image here is not from the North Atlantic. This is actually in the Bahamas after a hurricane. Extremely difficult, right? These things can be extremely costly. We'll talk about nat natural disasters in our next unit. All right. Awesome. Minimum and maximum temperatures. So another thing that uh, is sort of filling in a knowledge gap, right, as far as the effects of heat on the environment. So broadly speaking, right, Earth's temperature as it goes up, right, is going to pull the minimum temperatures up. In other words, uh, nights get warmer a lot faster than the days get warmer. Um, this graph is a little bit confusing at first, right? But it's worth taking a moment to kind of break it down. So percent of land area, right? Is like uh, what percent of the country, right? Is recording n new records, right? So more on the y-axis means more of the country of US is recording uh, temperature records, right? High temperature records, either daily highs or daily low temperature records. And if we look, right, so one of them is in orange, right, the hot daily lows. The red ones are the hot daily highs, right? In other words, this is maximum daytime temperatures, and these are maximum nighttime temperatures, or really minimum temperatures, right? And the trend here is clear, and this is broadly speaking true everywhere. Nights get warmer much faster than days go up at the extreme ends, but this can be extremely harmful for plant, right? So it's not just about pushing extremes. It's also about raising minimum. This can be extremely harmful because things cannot calm down at night. And in particular, as we'll see in a bit with human beings, means that people who don't necessarily have access to air conditioning or to good conditions cannot sleep at night as nighttime temperatures go up. It's uh, not good. Uh, broadly speaking, as far as the mechanics of how this works, so when you have greater temperatures in general, right, which is going to be a result of this amplified greenhouse effect, okay, greater temperatures in general, you have more evaporation, which leads to greater cloud cover during the day, right, this can actually have the effect of slightly dampening temperatures down below what they would be during the day, because the clouds have really high albedo and reflect stuff back into space. But then, at night, those clouds, which have sucked up all this heat during the day, uh, radiate it back out, right, and what you see is greatly elevated evening and then nighttime temperatures as a result, which is something that will come up again very soon when we do heat and human health.